So let's talk about scriptable objects for a while. First of all, they're primarily a data container and they should not contain functionality. Be wary of that because it might be tempting to put some functionality in there. And they are a parallel concept to mono behaviors and they also derive from the unity object. So the hierarchy would look something like this. We've got the unity object derived from it is the mono behavior. And as a sibling to mono behavior, there is scriptable object. So to, to compare these two, you could say the mono behavior is more the functionality of the game and the scriptable object would be the data of the game. So before we go more in depth with our scriptable objects, I'll show you how they can be used as an example from one of the projects I'm currently working on. And I've created an inventory system with different items, which should be very extendable because there might be hundreds or even thousands of items I would need. And I just created one single item prototype for each item. So for example, I have here some just some basic items I created to test it. For example, I have here carrots, potatoes, a processor and so on. This is some equipment zone. And as you can see, each of these is a scriptable object. And here in the inspector, I can change the values of these things. And as we already talked about, this is quite nice because in this case, all the data my uh, my items have is stored only once in one of these scriptable objects. And if I then have 500 instances of these carrots, the data of the carrots is only once inside my RAM because all of these carrots only reference to this scriptable object. Compared to that, if I had a mono behavior carrot and I had 500 carrots, it would have been uh, 500 times in the uh, in the RAM. And that's not what we like. So that's a very convenient way to use these scriptable objects. Also note, these scriptable objects, they're here in the project folder, not in the scene. They cannot exist in this scene. They're in the project folder, right? And um, what I did to summarize all of these items is I created a whoop, item manager and it is right here, an item database. And here I have a list of all the items that there are. And this is the access point where I access all of these items. So let's have a very brief look into the code. Um, I'm here in a namespace and here I created just two enums, nothing special here. And this is where the magic happens. So I created an item prototype and I derive it from scriptable object, not from mono behavior, but from scriptable object. And that's the important thing. And then here I have all the variables that I need and that's that's pretty much it here down there there's some stuff going on but it's not that important right now for us uh, the basic concept of scriptable object should be visible just by looking at these few lines of code but we're going to create our own scriptable object just in time right now we're doing a little bit of theory okay so now let's look at a few of the characteristics of our scriptable objects First of all, they cannot be attached to game objects. And also they do not exist in the scene. Instead, they usually exist as a file in the assets folder. So this is not universally true, but I really recommend you to do that because if you instantiate them during runtime, you might run into issues, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, also, Scriptable objects receive almost no, none of the Unity messages. So they only get on enable, on disable and on destroy. And thus they cannot utilize update or start, etc. But that's a good thing because scriptable objects, as I already said, they're only 
data containers. They should not contain functionality. If they would receive on uh, update methods or something like that, you would be very tempted to implement uh, functionality in these objects. But that's not what they're built for. They are built to force the programmer to separate his data from his functionality. And if you look at the future of Unity, the ECS, the Entity Component System, they try to enforce this uh, kind of thinking even more to separate data very harshly from the functionality. Compared to mono behaviors, scriptable objects save data even when the data is changed in play mode. Let's look at that in a practical example. Uh, I open my project wherever it is. And if I look here in the chest and I start the play mode, and now if I change some of these variables, as soon as I exit the play mode, those variables are reset to what they were before. Now, that's a feature that is usually nice and that's usually what you want because you can tweak around in, your, in the play mode and if you break everything, it doesn't matter because as soon as you exit play mode, everything is fine again. But if you're fine tuning some of those variables as a game designer, it, it would be nice to save them. And scriptable objects work a little bit differently than mono behaviors in this case, because um, if they are changed at runtime, they maintain their values because they aren't stored in the scene. So the Unity serialization process doesn't affect them if you start and end the play mode. So if you change variables in scriptable objects during play mode, they maintain the new values that you set during play mode. So they are not reset. And that's something that might be nice for your game designers. However, it's important that you know that they are not reset. So you shouldn't tweak around and break things with them. So now let's look at a few use cases for our scriptable objects. First of all, they're primarily data containers and they're, they can be greatly utilized to create an item system or inventory system. Also, you can uh, create uh, enemy stats with them and these stats can be changed greatly for uh, by your game designers. Or you can create ability data for the hundreds of abilities that you have. And also you can have global settings which can be adjustable by your game designer. For example, the damage scaling, level duration or whatever you can come up with. And there are many, many more use cases, but these are the, the ones that I just came up with in, in a few moments. But every time you need to store data, which is relevant for the whole project, you really should think about using scriptable objects for just that. Hey, I hope you learned something in this video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, this video is part of my Unity Design Pattern course over at Udemy. In this course, I dive far deeper into the topic and teach you what the best practices are, how to implement them, and how to apply these concepts in an Endless Runner project. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to follow the link in the description below. The first 100 subscribers get a 50% discount on the course. And also it takes a huge amount of work to pump out these videos. So I'd really appreciate your help. Anyways, see you in the next video. Thank you.